Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'd yield three minutes to the gentlewoman from Oregon, the ranking member of the Early Childhood, Board. Elementary, and Secondary Education Subcommittee, which has jurisdiction of, of the three bill, minutes. Ms. Bonamici. The gentlewoman from Oregon is recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, uh, Ranking Member Scott, for yielding. I rise today in strong opposition to HR 5, which should be called the Politics Over Parents Act. After spending 15 years as a very involved public school parent, I can say without hesitation that I strongly support parental involvement in education, and you won't meet a member on this side of the aisle that disagrees with that. But the bill before us today misses the mark. This could have been an opportunity to address the real challenges facing education, to make change that would involve parents in a constructive way, and also make a positive difference in education, and I'm disappointed that we aren't doing that. House Democrats have shown time and time again that we are committed to providing all parents, including those who traditionally face barriers to engagement, with meaningful involvement in their kids' schools. Indeed, it's becoming increasingly clear that the Democratic Party is the party of parental rights and family values. We have put forward a substantive plan that will actually increase the frequency, quality, and accessibility of parental involvement and engagement in schools. A substantive plan that invests in evidence-based models and support systems that have been shown to increase family engagement and improve student achievement. A substantive plan that encourages parents to be partners, not adversaries, in their children's education. A substantive plan that roots out discrimination based on race, disability, socioeconomic status, sexual orientation, or gender identity in our public schools. And a substantive plan that, unlike HR 5, doesn't carry dangerous authoritarian undertones encouraging book bans, discouraging the teaching of scientifically and historically accurate curricula, and leading to the micromanagement of the work of educators. We welcome a conversation about how to empower parents and urge our friends and colleagues on the other side of the aisle to abandon their politi politically motivated attacks on schools, teachers, and students. We should instead be working together on these issues in a bipartisan manner. Our nation's students and families deserve that. We need more parents, including those from diverse backgrounds, to feel included, supported, engaged, and welcomed at their kids' school. And this bill does not even begin to do that. I am leading more than 45 of our colleagues on a bill of rights for students and parents, a resolution that is supported by more than 250 education, civil rights, and parents groups, including the National PTA. Now, I've heard colleagues on the other side of the aisle say that history will judge us on how we respond to the needs of students and families at this moment, and I agree with them. Will we succumb to an extremist, discriminatory, narrow-minded anti-public education agenda, or will we work together to advance common sense, meaningful policies that will support parents, students, and educators? I urge all of my colleagues to take the approach that still sees public education as the great equalizer for all students, regardless of who they are or where they're from, essential to our communities, the economy, and our democratic republic. Please join me in rejecting this bill. And Mr. Speaker, as I yield back, I would like to introduce, time I want to introduce a statement from the National PTA the in opposition is no to HR 5. Recognized.